This is a brief video on ordinary childbirth or normal labor. Normal labor, as we said, is ordinary childbirth occurring in four stages at three to 42 weeks of gestation. We're going to be working our way through this diagram that was freely available on the internet and talking about the four stages of delivery as shown on this diagram. So let's begin with stage one. During stage one, as a provider, you want to monitor fetal heart rate, contractions, and cervical changes. So what exactly happens during stage one? There's two main phases that happen during stage one. There's the latent phase and the active phase. The latent phase is also called the quiescent, the quiescent phase, or the prodromal phase, or the pre-labor phase. And that begins when the woman feels regular contractions. She normally shouldn't be feeling regular contractions throughout pregnancy, but when the contractions become regular and uh, they're, they're, they're more frequent, that would begin the latent phase of labor. During this phase, the cervix dilates from zero to four to six centimeters. That end point of the latent phase is kind of debated, but generally agreed upon that it's between four and six centimeters. And in a woman who has never had babies before, this might take up to 20 hours. In a, baby, in a woman that has had babies before, this should only take up to 14 hours. But this is the initial increase in cervical dilation uh, when a woman begins to feel regular contractions. The cervix changes itself here, it thins out and it stretches. Um, the stretching and thinning is physiologically related to disulfide bonds that are breaking. Um, and effacement, which has occurred a bit throughout pregnancy, is near complete at this stage. Next part of stage one is the active phase. And uh, at this point, the cervix dilates at a faster rate. That rate is 1.2 centimeters per hour for a woman who's never had babies before, and 1.5 centimeters per hour for a woman who has had babies before. And the cervix reaches its maximum dilation of 10 centimeters. And during the, entire, uh, the entirety of stage one, you want to ensure that contractions are occurring at sufficient strength. The strength of contractions is monitored, is measured in Montevideo units, and you want to ensure that the contractions are at least 200 Montevideo units in stage one. During the active phase, the length is determined by the frequency and the amplitude of contractions. So amplitude, as we talked about earlier, uh, you want them to be at least 200 Montevideo units. And the size and position of the baby, as well as the women's pelvis, and whether or not the mom has had a baby before, also determine the length of the active phase. And lastly, dilation ends when you have a six centimeter dilation of the cervix, plus rupture of membranes, and plus no cervical changes after four hours of continuous contractions or six hours of the mom being on oxy. So those three criteria need to be complete to mark the end of stage one. No changes after four hours or no changes after six hours on oxy plus rupture of membranes plus six centimeter dilation. This is an image of stage one as the cervix dilates and effacement of the cervix is complete. And again, the important numbers to remember are there. During the latent phase, zero to four to six, in up to 20 hours for nulliparis, or 14 hours in a mom who has had babies before. And then that speed difference is 1.2 centimeters per hour, or 1.5 centimeters per hour in uh, active phase, up to 10 centimeters of dilation. Stage two of labor is marked by the end of dilation, the end of stage one, to the delivery of the baby. Delivery of the baby. Um, this can take up to three hours in a mom who's never had babies before, and it should take up to two hours in a mom who has had babies before. During this stage, you want to monitor fetal heart rate and position through the birth canal. There is a way to measure position through the birth canal, and that's called fetal station. And if you look at this pelvis here, you can imagine a horizontal line drawn between the ischial spine. Um, that horizontal line is your zero point for fetal stage, fetal station. Um, now, if you are one centimeter below that horizontal line, you would be called a plus one fetal station. If you're one centimeter above that horizontal line, you'd be a minus one fetal station. And the, the point that you measure is the top of the fetus's head 
to that horizontal line. And that's how you determine the progression of the baby through stage two of labor. There are four substages of stage two. These are the presentation of the head, the rotation and delivery of the anterior shoulder, followed by the delivery of the posterior shoulder, followed by the delivery of the lower body and umbilical cord together. Um, and these images kind of show the breakdown of stage two of labor. Stage three of labor is next. Stage three of labor is defined as the point of infant delivery to the point of placenta delivery. This can take up to 30 minutes in a mother, regardless of how many children she's had in the past. Mm -hmm. Expect up to 30 minutes between baby coming out and placenta coming out. This can be managed by providers either expectantly or actively. There are two approaches where you're actively trying to de deliver the placenta or where you're just sitting and waiting for it mm -hmm. to pop out. In active management, you can give a uterotonic drug like oxytocin, you can control traction of the umbilical cord, and you can perform a fundal massage. How do we know that the placenta has separated from the uterus wall? There are a couple ways, a couple indicators of this. First of all, if the placenta comes off of the uterus wall, you'll have a fundal height increase. The uterus was essentially pulling excuse me, the placenta was actually pulling the uterus down. So when the placenta separates, the fundal height is going to increase. In addition, the cord coming out of the vaginal canal will lengthen. The placenta was keeping the cord taut and pulled up, usually to the top of the uterus. Uh, when that comes off, then the cord will lengthen coming out of the vaginal canal. And because it's a very bloody organ, and it's essentially an organ for the exchange of blood, the placenta, you will have lots of blood when the uterus is separated from the placenta. These are some images of the third stage of normal labor. The placenta detaches from the uterine wall and exits the vaginal canal. And lastly, we have stage four or the postnatal stage of normal labor. A couple things that are important to note here. This is also known as the postnatal or postpartum time period. During this stage four period, again, stage four in quotes, because it's not really a stage of labor, it's after labor, we do want to monitor mom for signs of bleeding. And if she does have signs of hypovolemia or postpartum hemorrhage, we do want to perform appropriate hemodynamic stabilization. If there is a tear or if we induce a tear, if we have an episthesiotomy, we do want to repair that with stitches. You don't want to leave an open vaginal tear. Once baby comes out, it's typical to clean baby, dry baby off, make sure baby's apgars are normal, and then perform skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mom. This helps the baby achieve their normal skin flora from the mom. And after delivery, once the process is over, it's expected that the mom will have after pains or a cramping pain for days. She might even have vaginal blood and vaginal discharge for weeks following delivery. You should also screen for postpartum blues and depression and give mom a heads up about that and how that's normal and how to manage that and what's, what's to be expected regarding the major change in hormones that a mom might experience after labor. This has been a brief video on normal labor or ordinary childbirth. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.